You know, Mark and I used to actually sing in a, a local bluegrass band when we were in high school. Uh, I was like freshman, sophomore, Mark was sophomore, junior, something like that. There was a family at home called the Barnes family. Earl Barnes, his son Danny, and his son Randall, and some other guys around in the community. And we would all get together and pick and sing. Actually, they'd pick, and, and I'd sing. I'd stand there and I'd hold a flat top guitar. I can't play anything. Uh, Mark would hold a mandolin, and when he, <laughs> when he was singing, he'd stand there and hold it. And then when he wouldn't sing it, he'd chop it. Of course, he didn't play any lead things or anything like that. But it was a lot of fun. And it was wild because at the same time, while I was doing this bluegrass singing on the weekends with the Barnes family, um, I would go through the week and I would do opera workshops at Eastern Kentucky <laughs> University. Now that's a, I mean, that's one end to the other, you know, from the opera stuff to the, to the bluegrass stuff. But I had a lot of fun doing it. And then the opera, Dr. Greenlee at EKU, he would get on me and he'd say, man, you got to get that stuff out of your nose and get it in your chest and get it in your head and that kind of thing, which is tough to do when you're doing bluegrass. But I remember when Earl, he, he kind of got sick and he couldn't travel as much, but Danny and Randall decided they wanted to keep the band going. And so uh, they changed the name from the Barnes family to the Barnes Brothers. And uh, then when Mark and I started getting just a little bit of attention, they changed it to the new and improved Barnes Brothers. Mark was new and I was improved and they were the Barnes Brothers. And we had a lot of fun, a lot of fun with it. Never recorded any albums or anything like that, but it was a lot of fun. Bluegrass music has, uh, it's always been important to us. We've always listened to the bluegrass music growing up, and it was a big part of singing at church, and I think just simply because it's as simple as it is. And that was one of the reasons it was a treat to actually do this recording, something we've been wanting to do for a long, long time, and we finally had the chance to do it. And I think it's neat because bluegrass music can not only fit in with the, the Southern Gospel circle, which is just a part of the big umbrella of Southern Gospel music, but it also has it's, its own genre and its own music and its own style. Uh, and not only is there secular bluegrass music, but there's gospel and Christian bluegrass music. And of course, that's what we do. And to be able to think that we, a Southern Gospel group, could actually cross that line and go into a bluegrass kind of sound and a bluegrass kind of market and sing it. And not only do the bluegrass people enjoy it, but the Southern Gospel people seem to enjoy it too. That's what makes it a treat for us to know that we can sing gospel music, Christian songs with the Southern Gospel piano, bass, guitar, quartet style. And we can also do it with the, uh, with the bluegrass flair and the bluegrass instruments. And it's kind of melded the two audiences together.